so yeah, today I pretty much just... You know what? Uh, How am I doing? Okay. So, I've been trying to get a video out sometime this century, and every time I try to put things together, it just seems like none of it is going anywhere. Like, for the first two videos, things were fine, like stuff was happening and the future was exciting. That was the point of them, I guess. But this time around, I kinda let things slip, and now I have an entire year to cover. And it seems like all I could talk about was, well, this happened, and that happened, and this happened, and another thing happened. And, well, I mean, that's not, that doesn't make a good video. So during this semester break, I've been taking things a little more slowly. I mean, I'm still working 26 hours a week every week. But when I'm not working, I've been, you know, playing Minecraft on my old world, playing Kerbal Space Program, revisiting some old code, and playing around with Blender. And in the background, I've been listening to stuff that I used to enjoy when I was at home, when I wasn't so busy. And doing that somewhat made me realize how much I've changed throughout just this past year. I think I finally know what the video is going to be about. Yay. Right. Right. Making friends can be fun, even as an introvert. Well, you see, one can only be so scared of meeting other people when you've got something to lose. Now guess what happens when you've got nothing to lose. Uh, most people don't. For the, for the community, I... <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a blur to me now, but at least the people who I'll ever get to meet will at least know that I exist around here. Yay. Ooh, that's life. So, how does one get around in a country such as Japan? Well, most people would say a bike, of course. Well, see, when the building that you have to get to every single day for your class is situated 40 meters above your house, you cannot afford to sweat every single day. So, for a one-time purchase of 54,000 yen, you can get a battery-powered electric bike that can assist you uphill as if you're biking on level ground. Or you can take a bus to school every day, which over the span of four years will cost this much. So yeah, that was worth it, and yeah. So after I settled down at the dorm, I found a bunch of receipts in my pocket and decided, you know what? I was just gonna type them down into Excel for fun. And as expected, it somewhat spiraled out of control with me obsessing over every single thing I spent my money on. Well, it did give me an extremely comprehensive report on all of my spending, so I can have a reference with which I can justify my existence. Anyways, on a lighter note, kind of like a diary, this financial record does provide an honest glimpse into whatever happened every single day of my life. Like a trail of breadcrumbs that keep track of all the ups and downs and all the... Whoa. Where was I? Typically, moving into an apartment in Japan alone costs 200,000 yen just to move in. And the rent is around 40,000 yen a month, plus utilities, insurance, furniture, whatever, and you end up lonely and depressed. But in our case, you've got three college kids in the same major, moving out of the dorm at the same time, and we're all quite broke and not so picky. So, 
After looking for a couple of months, we found a place which only has 60,000 yen move-in fee shared among the three of us. We share a bunch of furniture, and the rent is 48,620 for three people. Well, I mean, for me, I did choose a smaller room, so my rent was down to 13,260. Yeah. Well, in total, how much did I save compared to living alone? Well, that much. That's right, mom. I just saved you from a second mortgage. Be proud of me. Right, I still don't have enough money and I have plenty of time to stare at the ceiling after finishing my homework. So what does that mean? I signed up for the only job I can get in Japan, apparently, that is to work at a McDonald's kitchen. Well, to make it quick, I went there, got an interview, mopped the floor, prepared the ingredients, assembled the burgers, stocked the fridge, and took out the trash. It was Hell's Kitchen during the summer because the AC was broken and we were moving to a new place. But yeah, we finally moved to a new place, which was way cleaner, way bigger, and the kitchen AC was not broken. Yay. In total, I did 24 hours a week during the break, which was all I was allowed to do, and I did four during the school weeks, plus, oh right, the second job. So, my first year chemistry teacher was like, hey kids, wanna volunteer to help my YouTube channel? I was like, cool, I have this editing machine just sitting around, I'll make use of it. In all honesty, I read papers, I don't have to justify Anyways, right, we started a new team with an editor, animator, camera operator, crystal grower, got an internship credit over the summer, and made some cool stuff. In the end, I ended up working into the next semester and into the next semester break. And yeah, pretty proud of what I was able to produce especially with, you know, money on the table. Yay! Right, it was November, and it's getting cold. So, I bought a bunch of heat tech, and stacked everything I had to go to school, and it was still really cold. But thankfully, my birthday arrived, and my friends graciously bought me a coat. Yay. And I simply stacked that on top of everything I already had because it was really cold. Okay, I was like, it was so, I, was, I didn't know. I was so sensitive to the cold to the point that if a breeze blew by and I wasn't ready, I would literally just gag right there. Like, it happened like 10 times. <sighs> There's nothing good about that. But well, we got snow, made a snowman. Yay. And yeah, got a new appreciation that my bed was right under the AC. Anyways. Right. This time last year, I was super worried of whether I had enough money to pay for whatever it was going to cost living here. But through several cost-cutting miracles, I was able to balance the expenses and even afford my own tuition, technically. And for a moment, I was quite proud of being able to do that. But yeah, ultimately, I was exhausted every day of the week. And the only thing I really allowed myself to splurge on was food or the tools that are directly involved in, you know, letting me do work. Anyhow, I knew I had to take whatever energy I had and get a better scholarship. Well, of course, I got an email saying that I had one week to prepare a research plan and I knew I was not gonna mess this up. So I spent close to 30 hours during that week writing and researching and consulting and writing on top of classes and four credits of exam and the work I was already doing. Plus there was an IELTS exam on Sunday in Bangkok. <laughs> right, I made it through all of that. It was March again, I was working in the McDonald's, as usual, taking a lunch break. That was when the email came in, saying that I got the scholarship, which doubled my allowance and paid for my tuition fee. 
basically, I had no reason to go back to work. I called my mom, told her the news, and well, apparently, my hands forgot how to assemble burgers that very afternoon. <sighs> Anyways, this means I'll be able to save up a bit, breathe a sigh of relief, and start looking into the future. Ultimately, through everything that happened this year, I finally realized that, you know, coming here was not a bad choice. It was the only place I was able to earnestly afford to go to, while also being able to do the kind of research that I'm passionate about. So, no paradox of choice here, even though, you know, a lot of the time, I think of myself as somebody who likes to be pushed around in life, but somehow, some part of me kept me on track. And anyways, okay, I guess we're moving on to the next stage of life. I'm hoping for another year of not just character development, but actual development. So yeah, can't wait to share it with you all. Thanks for sticking with me. And bye-bye. I'm gonna go take out the trash.